we are going to show you how to configure an EWS 360AP on an office environment. At this point, your new EWS 360AP should be connected to one of the available ports on your Neutron switch. I am using an EWS 5912FP Neutron switch. On your browser, type the IP address of your Neutron switch controller. In this example, I am using 10.1.1.239. When prompted, type your username and password. On the setup page, click on the Access Points tab. You will see a list of available access points that you can configure. Since we just connected the EWS 360AP to my Neutron switch, it would not be on the list. We need to click on the AP's Detected button on the upper right hand corner of the page. For this example, it is detecting one AP, and that is your EWS 360AP. Click on the checkbox for the APs that you want to add, and then click on the Add button. You can choose which way to assign IP address on your Neutron access point, in this example, I am configuring it on the HCP. The AP should now be on the list. We need to wait until it says online. Once it is online, we can already configure the settings. Now that the AP is online, we can change the configuration. We need to click on the device name and it will route us to the configuration page. It will be pretty simple from here. First, we will change the device name. In this example, I will put Office. We can click the Apply button later. You can also change the admin username and password for your AP. I will leave it on default for now. This time, we will change the wireless radio settings. We will configure the channel 1 HD mode first. For 2.5 GHz band, it is recommended that we put it on 20 MHz. It is best practice not to leave the channel in auto. For 2.4 GHz band, there are three non-overlapping channels we can use. They are channel 1, 6, and 11. In this example, I am using channel 1. The transmit power settings should not be on auto. In this example, I will start at 14 dBm. You can adjust it accordingly. On 5 GHz, since we have 80 MHz, we will use it and I will use a non-DFS channel which is 149. It is recommended that the transmit power on 5 GHz is 5 to 6 points higher than the 2.4 GHz. I'm going to set this on 21 dBm. Now, we will change the SSID and wireless security settings. If you have VLAN, you need to enable VLAN isolation and specify the VLAN ID. In this example, there is no VLAN present, so we will leave it disabled. For the wireless settings, we recommend using WPA PSK or WPA2 PSK. Select WPA2 PSK for type and AES for encryption. Type your passphrase. It should be at least 8 characters. We will make the same changes on the 5 GHz settings because we want to enable band steering later.
Band steering forces a 5 GHz device to connect to the 5 GHz network. We can leave everything on default for now. Just click apply after doing all the changes we want. It will take a minute to apply the changes. Once it is online, we should be okay. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.